So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm glad to share this presentation with David. Um, so, we did this presentation that first in Japan um, some months ago. And as we are again doing challenges this year, we uh, took the opportunity to basically make a presentation about what is the effect of doing challenges and CTF in um, specific conferences. And I think we wanted to, to show what, uh, this to you. So it's a, basically a way to share our experience. So um, who we are, both of us and Renato from Brazil, which is not there today, um, we are part of a special interest group at FIRST. Maybe some of you know FIRST. How many people know FIRST here? Well, many. That's great. Awesome. Um, so we, we are part of that group, and we basically do CTF-like uh, challenges, uh, and especially we organize those in, into the uh, uh, mainly annual conference at FIRST conference. Um, but we do it the same, so we basically make a kind of copycat of the first conference at AKLU2. Uh, so for some of you are already playing, so if you go online, uh, if you don't know about it, you didn't receive the email, the notification, and so on, it's not a big deal. You can still connect, and you can basically play with uh, uh, the challenges, and so on. There are plenty of teams already running, uh, playing, and you can really join that. Um, and then what we want to share with you today is really to, uh, to share with you what has your experience regarding that? And running CTF is something that is like quite a fun but interesting too. Um, so why we are doing CTF at first? And um, I think this one started for when we do annual conference uh, at first or conference like ACLU. I think one of the objectives is to bring people together, that you learn things from others, that you share uh, not only business cards, but basically you share experiences and things that you like together. So it's like big family. Uh, so really to reinforce, for example, the first community. Uh, the first community is a bit, I would say, large. Um, you might have the US third up to the Chinese third. So you see this is really culturally very large. Uh, you have plenty of third worldwide. Uh, you have to, to see it as a kind of space station. So we have plenty of different countries. Uh, so really the idea being was to, uh, to help people to spread knowledge and basically work together. Uh, and especially to, to increase trust. Because usually when you are uh, remote, you don't see people and so on, and you don't play together, it's really difficult to have such, such kind of level of trust when you, 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 you do incident response uh, in, a, in a global scale. Um, and especially first, for the reaching out of international communities, maybe you want to talk about that? So there was this attempt from first for quite a few years now to reach out new communities, um, including in the region of the world that are less covert at the first annual conference. And also group of people that are not necessarily present at the first conference or in um, the incident response community. And we design challenges. We also have this idea in mind, and you can see it from the content, that not all the challenges are technical challenges, but we also try to cover different type of content to ensure that we can bring new persons in, new communities, um, other type of skill and expertise as well. But the most important need to be fun. And I think it's fun not only on the playing side, but it's fun of the on the creation side too. Um, so thing it's it's when you have to, to design such kind of things, you have interesting things, especially when you, you focus only on CTF but more challenges to bring people together, uh, you need to reach a large audience. And um, if you look at a conference like first, uh, I think it's is less the case in at Akelu, but I mean at first it's very broad, so you might have legal people that are within a CSIRT, you might have communication people, marketing people, up to technical people, incident responder, the reverser. So it's really large, and you have a lot of non-technical uh, people. So when you design something like that, you really want to cover all the aspects, especially the non-technical ones. Uh, so if you are playing the challenges right now, you see that some of them are obviously non-technical, but very interesting to, uh, to, uh, to, to resolve. Another thing that was an objective, and I think um, um, David and others in the team were like, okay, we want to have something that really promotes con constructive challenges and, and behaviors. Um, sometimes you have those kind of, of, of challenges that are just online, you need to ex do exploitations, and you basically compromise the system. Um, so it's not really so exciting. Uh, and at the end, it's not really on the long-term building constructive behaviors. Uh, it's what we think, I think. Um, so it's, it's really, a, I think classical CTF might be an entry point for motivations, but it, if you go a bit further, um, you want to encourage team building and creation of teams. Uh, and that's what we try to do with the CTF and the challenges that we are building is maybe to even create on the fly uh, team that are working together. 
which happens. We have observed in the past that it happened and it works quite well. And which again point to the to this idea of creating diversity. Um, so we have teams, and it happened actually two years ago, where we had a team that nearly won the CTF, uh, made of people that were not that didn't met before and were not used to work together. Um, but since we also promote this idea of you need to work in a team, due to the fact that we have this variety of content, uh, so being a pen tester or developer is not enough, you need to find people with other skills in your team if you want to, to achieve good results, and, um, and especially if you want to win. To win. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the things, and um, <coughs> my, I think my, my biggest grip is, again, um, competitive point. Um, um, the effect that a lot of, of things are competitive on, on, on the work that you are doing on a daily basis, uh, but it's already the case when, when, when you do gaming and so on. So sometimes you can have you can have the kind of I would say dex, dex constructing competitive aspect and be more interesting and, and basically that. So people some are enjoying doing games because they like it or they are competitive, but some are just doing it for curiosity and, and so on. So you have to balance that too uh, and. Um, you, you might at the same time be very competitive, but you have to value collaborations too. And that's a difficult balance. Uh, sometimes within when we design things, we are like, okay, maybe this one is a bit too competitive and we might uh, go further into collaboration aspect. And it really the idea is like to create an environment and not just the challenges to just play the challenges and be the first in a, in a, in a list. Um, another thing that is complex, and I think people that are in school and doing learning know that about that, it's uh, scoring is super difficult. Um, uh, so sometimes if you just have scoring, it can be seen as negative. Uh, if you just have winner and scoring table, the one at the, uh, at the end of the table uh, might see it as being negative. Um, on the other hand, what we have seen, and that's really great, um, uh, we remember some, some challenges that we built and uh, collaborations. You might have, for example, even competing teams that are working together. And we find, we try to find new challenges where you need to basically share with other competitors to basically, uh, gain some points and so on. So, and what we have seen is basically if you work like that, you have more respect and those competitors tend to basically much work together at the later stage. Um, and, and sometimes too, when you, you do the organizations, we, can be seen as a player too. So when we create the challenges, we, we have to play too. And, Sometimes it's very interesting to uh, to balance those competitive aspects to make them more interesting and, and, and to basically create something that is like respectful and, and basically uh, uh, creating values. So the thing that is important is challenges and CTF can be a learning process. I think many of you know that uh, it's an active learning. Uh, there's a reason behind. Um, so it's basically there's some, some theory of knowledge and so on. Um, there's a direct feedback. So you basically resolve something. You have a direct feedback. So it's not like something that you have to wait for years to know if it was useful to learn, um, is actually looking at problem solving. Um, so problems can be legal problems, it can be technical problems, uh, and basically creating creative uh, solutions. So this is very interesting because when you do the, such kind of challenges, it's even more, I think, rewarding. Uh, so many of you, I think, are incident responder, and I was, I still do it, do it on a regular basis, and the thing is I'm writing reports. And sometimes you send a report of 40, 50, 60 pages for an incident, but you don't get barely a lot of feedback regarding those reports. So the question there, there you basically get direct feedback through the scoring. So which is like more rewarding for yourself and for the team because you know that you can go further and, and, and learn new things. So quick quiz for everyone. Um, how long does it take to forget 90% of what you learn? Is it one day? Is it one week? One month? One year? 10 years? Um, so, some guess? First? One, one, one day? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah? And I see who is answering, so I think there's uh, some experience there. <laughs> so it's, it's even, a, it's even a low and even kind of, you know, models, uh, it's called the forgetting curves. Um, and I'm sure you can pronounce better than me the, uh, Name of the author of that uh, model? I guess it's Ding House. Perfect. Um, and it's uh, showing that basically people forget 90% of the thing or 80% of within a month. So I think uh, Bob has some proven there uh, that can be done. Uh, now it's quite interesting there because you see that we are basically losing a lot of things that we are learning and I think it's, it's applicable to everyone. Sometimes we don't know about it. It's kind of bias. 
But I think this one is really important because if you play challenges on a regular basis, you basically start to modify that curve on a, on a, on a daily basis. Okay, a bit also on this idea, uh, which also I guess is linked to the, to the curve is we have this idea of active learning. So people, instead of learning the, the, the content, like we would have in a regular course, which is the basis, but, um, in this idea, you more learn about the process, how you find a solution, what has the pass, what are the, are the issues you face, the difficulties, your failure, potentially. Uh, <coughs> there's this idea that you learn from it. And the day you have to redo, when the day you are, you face the same kind of challenge, not exactly the same one, you will remember how you find a solution more than the actual solution, which at the end is the most important things because you can do, and if you need to find back the info, you will be able to do so. Um, the feedback was already mentioned. So instead of having to wait for this months or for ages to get a feedback, you know if your answer is right or not. Um, you don't then, you don't get the, a detailed feedback, but at least you know that is true, that's, that's wrong. Um, we have introduced at first, and I think it's quite valuable for two years, a debrief session at the end of the CTF, where all the participants can ask all the questions they want. And it was also super interesting, we had that last year and the year before, where sometimes the challenge were explained by other participants and not the developer of the challenge, which is super interesting. On one side, you see the, their way of solving the challenge, which is not necessarily the way you have predicted or that was uh, intended. And, uh, it's also, you also built on this collaborative aspect and sharing knowledge and experience from the different teams. So we actually have another type of feedback. Uh, and there is also this idea of repetition and practice. You do things, you redo things over and over again. And then again, it, it's kind of a reflex. You learn how to do things, and the day you have to do it again, and especially when you listen to the response with the pressure, you have strict deadlines, and you do, you need to do things fast. You know where you have to search for the info, you know how to do it, and it's, it's built. Um, and also this idea is, um, you need to learn. It's a life, lifelong processes. You cannot stop learning. There is only new things that you have to learn. And again, with the CTF, we try to build challenges based on what you have observed, what we want to achieve in terms of learning X goals that we discuss, and it's what we try to bring into the CTF. And, and what you are saying to, to us right now is reinforcement learning is not only for LLM, but it's for us too. Um, so you, you, we basically have to reinforce ourselves on a, on a daily basis on, on what we are learning. Um, and I fully follow what you are saying about the, the write-up and the debrief. Um, I think the most engaging part was the debriefing part because the players were like, discussing with the creator of the challenges and at the same time with the other players. And I think it was the most interesting part of the, of the, of the process. So for those that have never been at first, so I guess probably most of you, we have quite a big lounge that is reserved at the hotel for the CTF, probably bigger than this room, or at least as big as this room, uh, in certain cases. And usually it's overcrowded when we do the debrief. So for those playing, uh, I don't know who, there was actually a small challenge. Uh, so let's know that you have to take some pictures because that's, that's the answer. So that's just an extra motivation for those playing to attend the talk, at least one. So uh, just register, that. you know that you can solve already one well challenge, at least. <laughs> and get one point. <laughs> okay, um, about the gamification. So the, the idea of gamification is you build in use elements from the game um, to engage and motivate people. So people like usually games. Uh, and it's what you have typically in, in many elements. We can see many apps that work with this gamification ID to catch your attention. So in a way, we don't invent anything there. It's just the same principle. So by giving points, uh, bringing adrenaline of trying to be in the top three, five, ten uh, best teams, uh, you have this element of competition and, and just catch the attention of the, the audience. Except that compared to certain app, the aim there is the learning experience. Not to collect uh, data. Not to collect data, uh, make you stupid. Uh, the CTF is just typically an instance of the gamification. So we use this principle of gamification to attract uh, and catch the attention of the audience with this learning objective of learning by doing. Yeah, and maybe a collateral effect of flags. I mean, a lot of CTF are based on flags because they need to do scoring. Um, we were always discussing about that because sometimes you have answers that are a bit different. So it's a kind of challenging aspect. So in the future, we try to, we would like to involve or at least improve the, the challenges to not only the F flags, but other way to evaluate the scoring, which is quite challenging, but maybe LLM would help or other things uh, to, to solve that. 
Um, another thing that is, and I don't really like the term gamifications, we use it quite often, but um, this is quite in, quite dangerous sometimes. So there's some co uh, some cons of, of using gamifications uh, where you basically just captivate the uh, attention on the game itself, which is basically hiding the uh, educational aspect uh, or basically the learning aspect. So that's again a matter of balance of what is interesting to play. Uh, another thing that is interesting too is um, the fun part sometimes is not in games. They can be, but it's not always the case. Um, so um, if you design something with a nice story and so on, the, there's a fun part there to, to attract people, to, to basically drive curiosity and so on. So don't forget about that when you design uh, challenges. Sometimes the fun is not only in the game, but the fun can be in the description of the games and all the surroundings or and not only the playing aspect. Um, and another thing that is important is when you design the strategy for, for the CTF, um, you need to really find a way that is still playful at some times, um, but it still remains an education, educational tools. It could be, it doesn't mean that you need to learn a lot of things per challenges, but you can learn a very <clears throat> small step that could help you to, uh, to learn new tools. And for example, it's like the lightning talks. Maybe from the lightning talks, you will like, spot a GitHub repository that is interesting, and then in the next three or four months, maybe if you didn't forget about it, uh, you might say, oh, this tool was useful. And, and that's exactly the same what we try to do with TTF and challenges. Maybe there are some tips and tricks that you might learn during the, the challenges, and then those ones will be useful later on in, in your day-to-day -day work. Um, <clears throat> so the thing that is quite interesting, too, and that's the thing is... Um, uh, it's the playing of cybersecurity activities. Um, so... Do you prefer to basically be in a workshop doing an actual training from SANS, or do you prefer to play with friends? Um, and both have valuable things. So uh, sometimes you have to, to play on both sides, um, but it's, it's a gamification aspect can even try to squeeze all the things together. Um, but the thing that is interesting too is when you start to gamify the CTF itself, um, it's not only the, 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 the player of the CTF, but it's basically even go beyond and go to the uh, different communities and so on. We have seen that at first, where you have seen that people are talking about CTF, they did, without playing, which is quite interesting too. They say, oh, I've seen that, it's very interesting, and someone says, oh, how did you solve it? So if you, you talk and share with the others, or you solve some challenges, you basically learn from it. And the gamification aspect is not only what you do at a specific moment in time, but it's how you talk to others about a, a game that you were, you were playing. No, there is a kind of dirty part, even if looking at the picture is not so dirty. But the thing is, if you look at playing and organizing a CTF, it's not always like nice, uh, because it's a lot of work, for sure, but there are many things that might be uh, interesting to share there. Uh, and I think this one is, um, I think David put that one for me, I think, in front. It might happen when you design a challenge that you completely missed the target, or at least the people that are uh, actually solving the challenge. Um, so sometimes you set up, oh, it's super easy, everyone will be able to solve it. Um, I had a challenge for Japan, which was like, still on, on, online with it's a lot of points, and only one launch team was close to solve it. Uh, but I thought it was, this one was like a 10 minutes or one hour one. Or sometimes you like, oh, this one looks very complex challenge, and then at the end, it's everyone is solving it. And like, okay. So, challenge misalignment is very common. Um, and it's something that is very difficult to evaluate. So, sometimes when you design CTF, try to have a kind of test group to test your CTF and to see that it's basically the reality. Sometimes you, you, you live in your world and maybe your world is not the same as the other worlds. Maybe you want to talk about this one? Okay. So, one of the other aspects, which I guess is, is obvious if you already played, is if you want to compete and achieve uh, a result that put you on the leaderboard, um, it tends to compete with the content of the conference itself. So in certain cases, it's what you observe at first as well, is we have teams that just come for the CTF and believe that they get the value they expect from the CTF more than the talk, which is completely fine. But in, uh, it can be quite, quite difficult if you want to, to, to do a bit of both, so playing the CTF and... Um, and just watching the tools, the tools that you want to see. Um, and it's, uh, it's quite difficult to, to deal with. And okay. right now we have Christian in front of the audience on his computer. He's playing the challenges and basically he's maybe distracted from the talk too. So that's, 
<laughs> I think for competition it's quite. Uh, we have a second one over there. And, and then, uh, yes, and for example, Xavi is pinpointing some colleagues there. Um, no, but that's, that's part of the game. But at least they are in this room. Sometimes they go in other rooms, they don't li listen at any talks and so on. So at least they try to at least catch some information. That's a good move. So it's sometimes with CTF is, is a competition. And that's why with Flux Finger for, for, um, Akedu, we do the challenge, the main CTF the weekend before. Because I guess you can focus on it and you can come to the conference later on. Yeah. Um, but that's a different models. But sometimes you, you really want to have during the conference, like people can just like relax from, uh, theoretical talks to, uh, playing such kind of things. So. Which is typical. So why in this CTF we also have challenge that have, um, an entry barrier that is low enough or not too high. Just also to permit that you can spend some, some hours and not necessarily days, uh, to solve. Enough challenges to get uh, a score which is uh, more than decent. Uh, sometimes we have seen that there is a lack of engagement, and sometimes it's just coming by how you present the challenges. Uh, so if you have, like, for example, just malware reversing challenges, and you have like ten of them, you might lose uh, some engagement from the different participants. So you need to really have something that is engaging. So uh, having things like nice design of the CTF portal like uh, Flex Figure is doing is really cool or having nice story that we were um, uh, reusing at first and so on even based on, on existing uh, real cases make it more interesting. Uh, the cultural aspect and gender inclusivity is, is super tough um, so we try to cover a lot of, of uh, different uh, kind of activity that might be uh, different depending on the cultural aspect and um, we have seen that even for the technical challenges we see different ways to solve the problems due to the cultures. Um, la, this time we have some challenges for um, semantic or language and stuff like that. Uh, I remember a case with haiku. Uh, and then depending of your uh, language background, you solve it in a different way. Uh, and those are quite interesting to include there. And then last but not least, and this one is like, come on, it's cheating. Um, so if you have games, you have cheats. That's whatever happens is cheating is part of the of the gaming aspect, uh, but at least you want to still keep a kind of integrity in the competition, so avoid like people are, uh, I would say, uh, not very happy at the end and so on of the results. Uh, so you need to address it, but it should not be a light motif. It's not should be the cheating part. Should be like we should do everything against cheating. Uh, and you know, for some games, some people were doing that, and at the end they were killing the game. So you have to really find a good balance again for for the cheating aspect too. Um, for the challenge misalignment, I was mentioning it, uh, we can go quickly in those one. It's basically skill level mismatch. It's, it's, it's could happen and, uh, I'm the first to do the mistake and every year I'm doing the mistake. So, uh, I should learn from it, but it's difficult. Um, so it's again the same thing with the too difficult and too easy challenges. Um, another thing that is interesting too is the irre irrelevant content. If you do CTF into a legal, uh, conference and you basically just, uh, do malware reversing challenges, it might not work. Um, we experienced that some years ago in Luxembourg where we did the CTF and basically the target audience was completely different, so it was a complete failure. Um, but another thing that is interesting too is the outdated technology. Sometimes people get bored because, oh, it's old tech and so on. And if you look at the curve of technology, you have the really cool one, which are vintage, and then you have the one that are legacy that no one cares about, and the hype one. So usually you have to do your CTF on the two extremes, not in the middle. Uh, no one really cares about Oracle database, but at the end, uh, if you have like uh, Commodore 64 or uh, very funky AI stuff, then people like it. So keep 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 an eye on that. It's very interesting there. Um, yes, yeah, so and the footnotes again. It's a, it's a in from uh, from David. Okay, so on uh, the issue with the lack of engagement and risk, so on one side, uh, obviously, if <coughs> people stop participating, then you have a low participation rate, with people dropping early, uh, not really paying attention to the CTF or just doing other stuff, um, which typically when you design a CTF, you don't necessarily want everyone to play, but you at least want some people play. Right, yeah. And for us, it's, so we, when we do that, we all do that on our free times, mostly. Um, so our reward is having the people being happy and enjoying the, the work we put and the effort we put. So when you fail your objective, it's, uh, we don't get our reward. So the gamification for us is less. Exactly. Uh, and on the collaboration, again, we, we target the CTF to try to, to build collaboration and, and this idea of sharing, um, which for us is a, is a, is a key. Uh, and I guess everyone here knows that is when you 
when you do things together, when you work in a team, you establish relationship that will last and that can be useful in the context of your duties in the future. So if, for us, the collaboration aspect is, is really a key. Uh, and again, if we lose this uh, collaboration aspect, then for us, we again fail uh, our objective there. We, we know team that we are doing CTF and doing joint investigations together afterwards. So that's a kind of rewarding there that the CTF were useful there. Uh, again, this, this one is challenging sometimes. Um, they, about the diverse content. So you might have some fun with doing some content, but sometimes it's, it's, it's basically frustrating for some cultures. Uh, so if you address to a global audience, keep that in mind. At first, we have really a large and diverse audience. So it's quite, quite challenging sometimes. And another thing is, is try to ensure fairness. So, I have at least different set of, of, of challenges that are matching the scoring and so on and to, to be sure that everyone can, can play and so on, which is, I think, the most interesting aspect that you can have everyone actually playing there. Um, and we were talking about you know, non-technical challenges and I think we did that from the early beginning uh, at first and I think it was the most engaging part because we get much more particip participation if you have those kind of, of non-technical non challenges too and to mix those ones. Yes, this one. Um, cheating is, is really common and I think, uh, I will not give all the detail or to cheat on a, to cheat on a CTF, but, um, the, the, one of the common one is basically you create multiple accounts, uh, just to basically, uh, uh avoid those kind of test flags or basically flags that are uh, decreasing on pricing depending on the ins that you receive. Um, so don't do it, please. Um, another thing is, um, you might have pres pressure us when we do the CTF and operate it. We have that sometimes. Uh, usually it's a really a small proportion. So we see if, for example, if a, if a challenge is wrong or we, we did a mistake, we let, we have feedback like from different teams. That's fine. We fix it or, and that's, that's it. But sometimes we have one specific, uh, uh, team which is like pushing us because there's something that doesn't work and they really want the point and, and then they don't really, uh, play. So you have to be resistant to cheating from the social perspective too. Um, another thing that is interesting too, um, obviously the challenges here are local, so you get remote, but obviously a lot of people are creating their team outside too, which is kind of clever too, but on the other hand, it's basically uh, um, not really fair for the other team because you might have a unreasonably sized teams with like, I don't know, 40 people in, uh, in Russia and we have just one in Luxembourg. So that's not really fair. Um, and you have plenty of rule violations. Um, the thing is, it's, there is an incentive to win. So people are really trying to cheat on left and right. Uh, it's, it's part of sometimes human nature, not always. Uh, and I, I tend to, I tend to say, but I'm not sure if David agree on that, that cheating is not really a big issue. It's just a minority issue, but it's very, very vocal. So it's really the one that you listen to because it's there, like always talking and so on, but it's not really the majority of team. Usually, People are quite fair, I would say. No, no, that's, that's, that's really a minority, but they can, um, if the victory is lost due to cheating, it's super frustrating for the team that play fairly and they, and, and I think it's just a game, so don't take it too yeah. seriously. Um, you know how it is. Uh, so, so just for the, the one that are running CTF and, uh, keep locks. So, um, you know, if you have a 14 edge VPN gateways, you have to keep locks. Just. Just an idea because it's again a zero day on 14 net today. Um, but keep locks. It's super important. Um, because sometimes we, we find back some interesting things like people creating a multiple account, things like that. Um, we, we, for example, have things like an account that is asking for a lot of ins, but basically have a low, low, uh, low submission ratio. Um, then you have like, for example, some like kind of team that are together for submitting flags in a very short time period. So you can see that in the logs. Um, by the way, CTFD is well designed for keeping logs and so on. Um, think that you have this kind of, of, um, I, I will, I, I call those, those guys or organization hamster. They keep all the flags and just submit the late moment, the flags. Um, so it's, it's very interesting there to monitor those one too. Um, and another thing that is important too is for flags. Maybe try to create the dynamic flag, a unique value because it's more easy uh, and less, uh, um, uh, less, less easy to share those, those flags with other. It's just not an exhaustive list. We just like try to, to keep, uh, some hints about cheating and so on, but cheating will exist. Just reduce it at the minimum or the bare minimum to 
to to make the the game uh, fun. Yeah, I'm not sure we have how many time we, we still have. have five minutes. Okay. Okay. Right. So see, no, no. So how much? Two minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. Okay. So usually you don't you don't prepare a, a, a capture the flag in two minutes, but in one year. Uh, so you basically have a team of people and so on. And, and if you want to discuss later on how, with us or to design CTF and even work on, mm -hmm. on with us on CTF challenges and how you can reproduce even the challenges that we are. Um, just look at, at, at what we are doing there. So basically, it's kind of project management, but don't under underestimate the things. For example, David is doing a wonderful work as chasing people. We are missing flag. We are missing uh, these tools and this tool doesn't work and so on. Uh, so you need someone to eat everyone to basically get your, um, uh, challenges done. Uh, and test your challenges is, is super important there. Uh, just some statistics from previous uh, CTF. Um, we had uh, 199 players, 92 teams, so it was local teams. Um, and we even did uh, virtual editions uh, in 2020 and 21 uh, because the first conference was not taking place due to COVID. Um, but I think it's quite interesting there that we, we see that it's, it's actually growing uh, and we have seen a real interest of, of the CTF participations. Um, then the complex part is the challenges. You have to renew your challenges to make things more exciting and so on. Uh, but we were able to grow a team of more people and so on to, uh, uh, to create those challenges. Um, and at the end of the slide, you'll see that we have a, a website where you can connect and play with the different challenges. Uh, and we do replay. So we generate the challenges for the first conference and each time we do replays. Uh, for Akeli, we did last year, uh, but we did the same in, in Brazil, uh, in uh, Norway, in Laos, Cambodia. Uh, and different places. Today, is basically at, in Luxembourg, we have some that will be foreseen for Af African Cesir, some in Brazil again. Uh, so that's, I think, quite important to just replay the, the different challenges. So if you want to play on the permanent CTF, you can go on ctf.fur.org. There are more than 600 challenges, um, and you can uh, share it, pick what you want, and just play with it. Uh, we have some support from different Cesir that are uh, supporting us for, for doing that. Um, so Really, the thing important for us is, is really those challenges are, are useful. Uh, it's really a complement to trainings, uh, and that's quite funny too, because first did a kind of catalog about the service framework, and the CTF are inherent part of the catalog. Um, so that means it's a training model. Um, it's really a way to outreach to other countries, um, and we have seen like it's, it's really promoting diversity there. Um, so that's quite, quite important. So the most important aspect is, uh, we just want to, to thank for this year, CTF team, you have all those different organizations that contributed actual challenges. Um, so what was the total of challenges that we have this, this one? 150 something. Yeah, 150. So that means people invested time for creating those challenges. If you want to be part of creating challenges, you are more than welcome. We are always uh, lacking uh, of support with replace because that's also costing a lot. So we search definitely for help. Uh, for the aspect of the organization. Yeah. So if you are a team member of FIRST, you can even join the SIG, uh, and then we have kind of open discussion with uh, other partners to create uh, create challenges too. Thank you very much, but the best part is not us, it's the ones that are playing, so that's the most important aspect. Thank you. Thank you.